Sí, eso hace por ser el líder. Era que corrió y mi jarro cumplió. Era y fijó. El bueno para ti, Torrelito Cris, ha vuelto a Siliza. El vino de él, al fin, a guardar de casa, de ir acá. ¿Cómo te quería? I'm sorry, I forgot the word. Anyway, and uh, God is with them all the time. And uh, the presentation, the program, the uh, 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 so they are, and then some Marandas, he, this person, he was so intelligent. He said he was a poor, the normal people. And uh, he loved the Lord very much. He knew that uh, the uh, or, uh, he, he didn't expect to be rich in this world. Because the, uh, the money in this world really don't have no value. When you are headed in faith, he had a lot of faith from God. And uh, he, he could have anything he wanted here, but his faith was in heaven all the time, all the time. And he was passed by God. And one of his problems that he did, that he did for all the people, there was an angel, and there was God. And you can tell if you uh, if you are not clerical, you can tell more or less what he was thinking all the time. And then, if you turn the page of the road, the Psalm 23, so I, I recommend to everybody to pray until you learn it. It's short. And it says some beautiful, beautiful, beautiful things. So more or less, you know, what is uh, what he was, what what he was, and uh, in the name of the Son, the Son, the Holy Spirit is the Son and the Holy Spirit. I'm gonna go home and take my medication. When I take communion, I never eat anything, and I never eat liquid until the only thing I take is adios. So. God bless you, everybody. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you very much. Such a wonderful young man. And from the time he came, he was my older brother. And I watched him grow and, prosper and do everything so beautifully. He went to school. He was a good son. He was a good son, godson to my father. Never forgotten. And also, they came at all our times that we needed them. And he was also the acme of, in his field. He, he got his doctor's degree, we were so proud of him, and he's done everything well, and the biggest thing that he did, whenever he could help, he did. And that's the worth of a man, is how much he can help, and how much of a, of a change he can make to his world around him. So he did change his own world, and he did, was the best friend, and the best brother, and the best son, and the best husband, and we'll miss him dreadfully. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank and I need to do it. Thank you. Thank you. I've been days many times, but I've never told this story. The story's from 1979, 1980. Um, I was uh, employed by John Deere as an area merchandising representative, and we were concerned with advertising and floor displays for the John Deere dealers on, on the West Coast. And from time to time, when we ever had to do a big show, they would put me uh, to team up with the only other area merchandising representative on the West Coast, an old man about 60, 65 years old named Vern Pulliam. I'm sure he's passed away. I haven't kept track. 
And we would work together, and we had to do some very um, menial labor like, I remember specifically, putting together store shelves, metal store shelves, to put and make a display and all that kind of stuff. And um, back then I was 22 years old, 20, 22 years old, 23. And I would kind of, uh, every once in a while, when the store shelves wouldn't get put together, I'd start grumbling, grumbling. And he would say, just a minute, he would say, and he'd say this over and over again every time I kind of griped. He would say, the trials and tribulations of this world are not to be compared to the glory of the hereafter. By heart, since I was 22 years old. He was quoting St. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verse 18. The trials and tribulations of this world are not to be compared to the glory of the hereafter. And I would like to use that as the theme of my comments, brief comments, this afternoon. And Morphia, and Morphia. Pardon me. I'm sorry if I interrupted your conversation. You have a loud voice, and Morphia, by the way. <laughs> anyway. The trials and tribulations of this world are not to be compared to the glory of the hereafter. When we started this church, as I said in, in, in uh, after liturgy today, I didn't know what to expect. And I got a surprise in, in Pandeli Papajan as a sign from God that this would be a blessed event because who would have ever thought I'd walk into a complete strange place with no church and find an excellent chanter like that. I took that as a huge, huge sign from God that things would go okay. So we started and we did liturgies and we had our basic programs. And then, sure enough, we had at one point one of our parishioners who's been our parishioner from the beginning, Angelo Tsokopoulos, come up to us and say, you know, I have some land out in Laguna where you're starting a church and my, me and my, my partners would like to donate it. So he did. Who remembers where the first land was that Angelo won three, four, five, six people? It was over right now, today, it's right next door to the Laguna Racket Club on Elk Grove Boulevard. He gave us seven acres there, and then a little later he turned around and gave us three more acres behind it, ten acres total. Well, it was a great donation, but unfortunately those of you who are in real estate uh, you may know that churches have a religious exemption. But in Sacramento County, in order to claim the religious exemption on property taxes, you had to have something on the property that was used for religious purposes, and we didn't. It was just dirt. So we paid property taxes on that piece of land for quite a few years until Angelo came back to us and said, we have another piece of land here in Laguna West, three acres, We'd like to donate. But what should we do with the 10 acres? He goes, go ahead and sell it and use that money to build the church. And we did. And we built the church in 1995. It was a cozy uh, environment. Um, how many of you remember that we used to have coffee hour in the Sunday school room? That's good. You've been around for a while. 1995. Then, in a little while, Angelo's brother, Angelo Tsakopoulos' brother, George Tsakopoulos, the husband of Drosula, who is in church today, but I don't know where she's sitting. There she is. Drosula's husband came around and said, gee, it's kind of crowded in here. You don't have much room to move around in. And I said, well, you know, we're trying to do, we want to build a hall someday, but you know, that's a big project. He goes, well, let me, let me see if I can help. And the short story is, about 10 years after we built the church, so it would have been 2005 or so, George and Rosula Tsokopoulos decided to donate $1,250,000 to build this. And we did. Now to think that Angelo and George
George both have, besides being brothers, the, both, the thing that they both have in common is that they are both really, well, George has passed away now, but both of them very, very hardworking people. They made their living through the real estate investments that they had, but that is hard work. And the, one of the hardest things about a real estate investor, just from what I've learned, a real estate investor always has to be thinking 20 years in advance. What's going to happen in 20 years? Where are houses going to be built? Where are people going to want to live? And they both did that very, very well. So, meanwhile, the money that Angelo gave was almost enough to build the church, and the money that George gave was almost enough to build the hall, but we had to borrow a little bit of money uh, to finish both of them off. And the total, at one point, I think the most we had ever borrowed was $700,000, okay, between the two buildings. So we were paying, and we were trying to do the best we could, and going along, and going along. Well, back at the beginning of the church, we had another young family that joined, uh, joined us while we were still in the warehouse, and that was the family of Steve and Lydia Howe. Their two daughters, Stephanie and Stacy. Uh, Stephanie's here today. Stacy couldn't come. She lives in Southern California, but Stephanie and Stacy. And Stephanie and Stacy are probably two of the few people today that remember Sunday school in the back of the, of the, the warehouse where we were celebrating liturgy in the front. In the back, we had some tables set up for Sunday school. That's how proud we were. But those are precious memories. Precious memories. <laughs> Five months old. Oh, that's a beautiful age. Lydia and Steve have been with us since those days in the warehouse. Through the construction of the church, through the entering the church, through the construction of the hall, through the first banquet of the hall. And all of those things together. Now, Steve and Lydia... Have, um, have decided to move up to Truckee, California, and uh, they've sold their house in Elk Grove, and they've moved up to Truckee. Um, but before they left, as I said in the email, they wanted to make a special gift to us um, to help us pay off the mortgage of our church. And recently, the last month or two, they gave us a check for $300,000 to do just that. thank them sincerely because this has been the Howell's spiritual home for over 30 years. They established their, their uh, well Steve established his practice and then Lydia established her um, pathology, her pathology um, um, knowledge at UC Davis for many, many years. And now it's time to relax. And whenever I see here somebody re retiring, because I'm 67, I think, gee, that would be nice. <laughs> Someday I will. But so far, they have decided to retire and to, and to, and to kind of uh, rest and, and take, take, their, take their ease. Um, but from the beginning, who would have known how difficult, well, how difficult things would have been. Now, today is a big day of celebration. I gotta say this, because we're all family here, I gotta say this. And because of the generosity of the house and the Tsakopoulos and so many other people that have donated to our church and to the construction of it, we have arrived at a very significant day. And we're all celebrating. the Sacramento County Tax Assessor. <laughs> Let me tell you, last year, all churches enjoyed what we call a religious exemption so that they don't pay tax property taxes, except in Sacramento County. Um, last year, our tax bill was $1,000. We paid off the mortgage about a month or two ago, took the check to the bank, 
And that started a whole process of closing the loan and transferring the deed from the bank to us. And that has to go through the county. And it went through the county. When it went through the county, the tax assessor saw it. And he probably thought, well, they don't owe any money anymore. Let's do some checking up on this church. <laughs> so they claim that they did an audit of our property and of our church. They claim, but the dates that they gave don't match with the records that we have. I've never met any of these tax assessors ever. So now we owe this year, we got our bill, not $1,000. They sent us a tax bill of $62,000. They removed our religious exemption completely and um, are expecting us, I assume, to defend ourselves. I called them on the phone. They wouldn't listen. No, that's just the way it is. So we've had to hire a, a, a tax attorney to walk us through this process of appealing their exemption decision. And I think it will go very well. But I want to tell you, the trials and tribulations of this life are not to be compared to the glory of the hereafter. Because we're not, it's, you know I've been here for 36 years, and you know me by now, some people aren't too crazy about Father Dino. Some people, they can handle him, I guess. Yes. But one of the things that I, uh, that I pride myself on is my fighting spirit. Fighting. We started the church with 20 families and $5,000 in the bank to start a brand new church. The Archdiocese said you had to have 50000 but Bishop Anthony said, that ah, 5000 is enough. <laughs> to make it to the, from one month to the next, you have to fight. You have to struggle and try. So we're going to fight this decision of the $62,000. And as part of that fighting, since they're so upset because they claim they know that other people use this hall, we're going to stop renting the hall now forever. We're going to stop renting it so they can't use that as an excuse. And then we'll go with the tax attorney to the county office and make our presentation and Blah, blah, blah. I always say this. In California, we have the best weather in the whole country. In California, we have the most beautiful scenery in the whole country. Mountains and oceans and whatever you want. Farmland, everything. And in my opinion, in California, we have the worst politicians. Yes. The worst. Amen. as the chaplain of the California State Assembly for 22 years, more than twice as long as any other chaplain. I've seen these politicians up close and personal. I hear how they think. They tell me what they think and how they do things, and I'm not impressed. One, one politician I was riding up in the elevator with one day was shaking his head, shaking his head, shaking. This was, remember the time, I think it was, it was that Arnold Schwarzenegger was governor when they had to take a vote to allow Indian casinos. Remember that time? I don't remember what year it was, but that was when they were voting to approve um, Indian casinos. He was shaking his head in the elevator. I said, what's the matter? He said, oh, I don't know. I don't know what I did. I said, what did you do? He said, well, I just agreed to vote yes on the Indian gaming casino measure for a thousand dollar donation to my, to my campaign. I said, a thousand dollars? Geez, I'll give you a thousand dollars to vote no. <laughs> no, no, it's already done. I couldn't believe it. First of all, that he told me, and second of all, that you would be so blatant about your, your ability to be bought. So the politicians in California, and maybe because we have people that elect them, I don't know what it is, but we have to struggle through it. The good news is, though, I think we're going to win, especially when we tell them we're not renting the hall anymore and everything is just for our own parishioners 
and donations that they give to use this hall. So if you want to come after us again about our donations, that's a different story. The trials and tribulations of this life are not to be compared to the glory of the hereafter. I learned that when I was 22 years old, and it still applies to me today. But onward and upward. Today was such a beautiful day in church. We had excellent chanters. As I said, the church was filled, and it was, I was so happy to see that. At this time, I would like, before we actually burn the mortgage, and I have... Actually, this is a, it says it's a Xerox copy of the top page of the mortgage, and up here in the upper right-hand corner, it has stamped in red ink, paid. So we're going to burn this. But before we do, I want to invite Dr. Lydia Howe to come forward to offer a few words. Lydia? Thank you everyone. Um, I love the microphone. It always makes me feel like a lounge singer when I hold it. I am not going to break into song, even though it is really um, a wonderful celebration today. My family and I are very happy to um, be part of this. And certainly, it's not just us that made the mortgage go away. Um, it's really been everyone throughout these years, and we are really just happy to be the closers. Uh, that helped to make it happen. Um, we, as Father Dino said, we've been here many years. I remember first coming in 1989, and actually my youngest daughter was the same age as my little young grandson, um, just a few months old when we came. And uh, I remember sitting in the back of the warehouse, and she was in a stroller, and my oldest Stephanie uh, was coloring. And so, you know, we've been here all these years, and we've seen um, the community grow in so many ways. And, oh, I guess I just knocked something off. Um, but we've seen the community grow in so many ways. And um, we're really grateful for our friendships here over these many years. Um, I really want to thank all of you for being great friends. Um, and I especially want to thank my husband whose idea it was uh, to make this donation. Um, and it's really because all of you have been so welcoming. You let a Presbyterian into your mix. Here he is waving his hand. Well, Father Dino. <laughs> With a little help and inspiration from Father Dino. But really, you've all been wonderful friends, and he's been very honored to have many patients um, for our, from our community. Uh, so really, um, you know, it's, it's been um, a lovely thing. So, you know, part of the reason we give this gift is out of gratitude, and I think um, gratitude is a really important uh, reason for anyone to give a gift, and we have lots to be thankful for. But uh, gifts are also given um, to reflect tradition and uh, to show duty and responsibility and um, help support purpose. And those are the reasons that uh, we give this gift to. My family does have a history of tradition in uh, supporting churches. My great-grandfather was the first one to come to this country. He came in 1910 in that great wave of immigration. And he helped establish one of the first churches in the Chicago area. His name was Nicholas Leonard. He'd been a teacher in Greece, so I think he's a teacher. Uh, he you know, was one of the few with maybe a little higher education, and he recognized the importance of the church in the community for new people. He helped establish St. Basil's Church um, in Chicago, which then was right in Greektown. Now it's at the edge of the University of Illinois, Chicago, and the Medical Center District, where my father went to medical school. Uh, and then I had a, a great uncle who um, helped found the church in Milwaukee. Uh, was uh, influential in getting Frank Lloyd Wright to design that church. It's actually on the National Register of Historic Places. And my parents helped uh, found and build two churches in the Chicago area, including the one we were married in. So it's really nice um, to continue that family tradition. And it's also a certain sense of responsibility. Steve and I went to um, the Holy Land a few years ago, and yeah, we saw many wonderful things while we were there. You know, all the beautiful biblical sites, 
But what impressed me the most, when we went on that trip, we visited the Holy Sepulcher, and there, you know, was the tomb of Christ. And who is the protector of the tomb? It's the Greek Orthodox. We are designated as the protector of the tomb there. It's not the Catholics, it's not the Anglicans or the Protestants, it's the Greek Orthodox. And that really impressed me, that this is our responsibility to protect the faith uh, wherever we are, uh, including in Elk Grove. Uh, and then lastly, you know, I hope that our gift, another purpose of gifts is to inspire others. And I know not everybody can give a gift the way we've given a gift, but what has really always impressed me about our community is that everyone here gives in so many ways. They give their time, they give their treasure, you do all the wonderful things for festivals and um, all the lovely events that the church has, and you support it in so many ways. So even though the mortgage is gone, as Father Gino says, the fight continues. Uh, there is always something new. You know, when I was a department chair at UC Davis, I used to say one problem would go away and somehow something else would rise to fill the void. And, you know, in this case, it's the taxes. But, you know, sometimes it's the roof, sometimes it's the carpeting. And then you also want to grow and be bigger and better for the next generations. And so I hope that um, our gift helps take away some of that burden so you can, can continue to do wonderful things for future generations. Thank you. The Presbyterian in the whole world is Steve Howe. <laughs> Let everyone know there's never going to be another Presbyterian that will take his place. All right, now, what we're going to do, <clears throat> We got a nice bowl that the Philopolis is providing. And Steve and Lydia, I've asked that you come up. And if you could bring your uh, grandson, Steve, Mason. What we're going to do is we're going to burn the mortgage. The benefactors are going to be here to celebrate their gift, but also their grandson to celebrate the future generations that will benefit from St. Catherine's Ministries. Okay? Now, um, I'm going to get close so I can get nice. Um, here's the mortgage, and we're going to. Um, Did you get a picture of um, uh, Yeah, well, hey. Um, um, Yeah, okay, so Lydia's going to hold it, Steve's going to burn it, and while they do that, I'm going to sing a hymn that says, Whose God is as great as our God? You're, you are the God who alone works wonders. These tales make us. It's a beautiful hymn. So while we're burning this, get your cameras out. This is kind of a historical event.